I've had guns pulled out on me plenty of times. Yeah. You have? Yeah, definitely. And, and like what? I mean, what? How'd you get out of it? Um, I don't know. I just always got out of it. Like, just smiled. never really heard of a bounty hunter and I didn't hardly expect an Italy English girl to have known what a bounty hunter was. The first time I met the real Domino Harvey, I find that she was very cool. She was like shy. You know, I think that she was also maybe impressed, you know, that we're doing something about her life. I think, you know, she is she's somebody who, who needs excitement, who needs, you know, something to, to wake her up in the morning and to really make her feel alive. She had this amazing ability that when somebody pulled a gun on her, she wouldn't flinch. And it was just a talent that she had and she didn't know why, but she just exterior-wise, something just, she just calmed down as opposed to kind of got all scared and het up. And I thought that was a really good image, that she is somebody who, in, instead of freaking out at, at things that you would normally freak out at, she, she manages to, to get really calm. I met her 12 years ago and she came to my office and she was, um, she was beautiful, she was tall, um, she was chameleon-like. One day she'd come in, she'd look fantastic, because she, you know, she was, um, she'd just finished her career as a model and just started bounty hunting. She would go in and she would be in a bar and she would chat up some guy who they wanted to get out into the parking lot and she'd say, you know, hey, let's go to your motel room or whatever. And they'd get him out into the parking lot and then the guys would, you know, jump on, on the person. And that was that kind of, that was the beginning, I think. We'd have to draw somebody out, get them out of their house, get them out of their apartments or get them out of their business, place of business, you know. And her going up there and just talking the way she talks, she gets them out. She's a girl that is born in England. She was the daughter of a very famous actor called Lawrence Harvey. He died when she was very young, so I don't think she was directly influenced by him, but I think she's inherited a lot of his um, very strong personality. Her father was the Manchurian candidate and her mother was a, a Vogue model. I'd been working in Berlin with a, with a photographer called Helmut Newton and there was another girl with us and her name was Dominique Sander and she became an actress, very well known, and her nickname was Domino. And I thought it was such a pretty name. I'd never heard of anybody called Domino so I thought if I have another daughter I shall call her Domino. And I did. After her father passed away, you know, she came to, to Beverly Hills and um, was not uh, a fan. The luxurious environment of Beverly Hills she found to be very vapid and empty and she immediately rebelled against it and was playing with switchblades and throwing stars and nunchucks and all sorts of, you know, weaponry. She went to boarding school in England. She didn't grow up in Beverly Hills. She wasn't a Beverly Hills kid. You know, she, although her father was a famous actor and her mom was a famous model, she wasn't that person that so many of those kids, I think, probably do become. There were often many occasions where we had to go, we were going out for dinner or we were going somewhere where it was more appropriate for her to wear, you know, proper shoes and uh, no, no, she didn't. I always wore trainers. There was always some, a, quite a good outfit on the top and then I'd look down and there would be the trainers. <laughs> school when we were 11 years old and she arrived like halfway through uh, a year which is really hard to do anyway for anybody and um, I can't remember if Domino had been suspended or expelled from another school <laughs> she got expelled from that one but she arrived I saw her going into my room and I walked down the hall thought who the hell is that and she had this really long blonde hair and she was really tall she was really beautiful and um, every single girl in that school hated her and <laughs> she was like immediately just dis disliked by by our year, except for by me. She was kind of aloof as well. She had a kind of thing about her. And she was in my dormitory and she was in the bed next to me. And the first thing she asked me was, would I um, go and do judo classes with her? So, so she was already into sort of, um, not violence, but she was into sort of manhandling people at an early age. But she didn't like that pussy life. She didn't like boarding schools. And so you had all that thrown in your lap and you didn't take advantage of it. She was against all that stuff. She just wanted to do stuff on her own. She'd just shrug her shoulders and go on her merry way. 
Okay, she's very strong. I just thought she was amazing. I just thought, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this person. I think that for Domino, she wants to be a bounty hunter because she was a rebel. She wants something different in her life. She didn't want to be a Beverly Hills wife, you know? She didn't want to do shopping. She wanted to do bounty hunting. But in fact, bounty hunting came to her life by accident. She applied for a job in a news from, a, from it was like an advert in a newspaper, you know? I mean, what goes through your head? You go, oh yeah, bounty hunting, that sounds good. I was in a bit of a predicament with my family, it wasn't speaking to me, and finally, my mum said I could stay at her house. I was like 22 then, and um, I'd been away for a few years, but she's like, okay, you can come and stay with me, but you have to get a job. So she was pressuring me to get a job. So in the LA Times, it said bounty hunters needed now. And I went to a seminar, and that's where I met Eddie. That's not where I met Choco, though. You know, uh, Ed, Ed Martinez gave me a call and said that I got somebody I want you to meet. And we have an interesting proposition for you. And I said, like what? You know what I mean? He says, you'll find out. And he, they brought her down to the neighborhood and he introduced me. He says, because he had told her that I used to work with him once in a while. You know, then he told me, he gave me a proposition. He said, well, would you do us a favor? Would you be her bodyguard? Because then he explained to me, you know, that she's going to do a movie and stuff like that. And it's all in process right now. It's all in the works. It's kind of interesting, you know what I mean? I said, yeah, sure. I'm not doing nothing. And me and her, when we met, we just got tight. I mean. It's like we knew each other already. It was just, it was that, it was that weird. I think I first found out when, when the newspaper article came out about her. And I have friends ringing me up and saying, what is this? I was staying with my friend Sasha Gervaisi, who's a, who's a writer. He wrote um, Terminal. And he was at the time writing for a, a newspaper called The Daily Mail. And I said, you've got to meet this girlfriend of mine called Domino Harvey. She's like amazing. She's a bounty hunter. She runs around with these guys, you know hunting down criminals. He was like, fuck man, I want to meet this girl. <laughs> it's this girl, I want to write a story about her. Domino turns up and she's got this monster truck, like one of those huge trucks with the big wheels. It's like six in inch extension on it, you know, this kind of thing. Anyway, so she showed up and, you know, Domino's got a certain presence about her anyway and she just also has a certain attitude about her, like, just don't really bother me too much, okay? And so Sasha sat down and Sasha started asking her story and everything. And they, um, so she told him her life and everything, and he was like, fuck, you know, can I, can I write your story? And she was like, yeah, okay, fine. And he met with Eddie, and he met with Choco, and there was that picture, which they'd been used in, it's been used in the film, of, like, outside the restaurant or whatever, with the three of them. I think there's been a picture that's kind of been copied from that, which was in the Daily Mail. And that's what Tony saw. My business manager, Neville Schulman, sent me the article and said, uh, you might check this girl out. So based on that, I tracked her down in, in Hollywood and, uh, and got her to come to my office. And, and sat with her, you know, and she was um, she was great because she sort of she was shy inside, but she had this sort of attitude on the outside which kept people at, at bay. When I started doing it, I was 23. I think. So your mom was cool with you, sort of being gone for two weeks at a time. No, she must have freaked out. No, but I was like that since I was a teenager. Anyway. Oh right, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I never had any rules at home, really. Yeah. Yeah, the only rule I had was don't get sunburned. I'm serious. Don't what? Don't get sunburned. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was like, if I was sunburned, she'd freak out, but, you know, if I come back with, like, fucking ton of guns and shit, she'd be like... Well, she explained it as little as possible. Um, I just sort of got little inklings here and there. I know I did buy her for one of her birthdays. I was... Suddenly, I took it rather seriously. I bought her a Kevlar vest. Your mum bought you the bullshit vest? Yeah, she was birthday present. Oh, right. And I never wore it. I wore it maybe once. Right. <laughs> but um, I still got it hanging in the closet. When I first seen her, I, I said, no way. Why do you want to be a bounty hunter? You know, why down here? You know, why with us? You know, she says, I want to go where the action's at. I want to go where it's the roughest. And I think she liked hanging out with poor people. I think she liked hanging out with people who had difficult lives and who had seen violence and, and had encountered violence in their life in a way that she never had. And, and she liked the idea of hunting down criminals. I used to call her the furious one because every time she's ready to fight or something or she just fight, she put all her might and fury into it. You know, I mean, I mean you have to grab her and stop her sometimes. 
because she'll go. It used to be people like Ed Martinez and Choco and Domino who were on the renegade side were kind of running amok back in the day. 12 years ago, the bounty hunting business wasn't um, wasn't a big business in Los Angeles. It's very trendy now, obviously I was ahead of my years, you know? You know, two shows. I didn't think it was trendy when I was going into it, I just fell into it. In the beginning, we were like, you know, we were like uh, the three musketeers, you know? Thought we'd go out there and just do it. Ed and Choco were smart in that they were, they saw an opportunity with Domino, saw an opportunity of taking this girl and using her like a carrot because she could get in places and open doors that they couldn't because they looked like a couple of dangerous, dangerous guys, you know, so a couple of thugs. They became her surrogate family, and so she was living in her mother's guest house in Beverly Hills and, and running around bounty hunting, and she uh, was just like turned on by the thrill of doing this. And I remember one of the stories when she told me, which, which just sounded so fucking hair-raising, I was like, fuck, what the fuck are you doing? Um, and they'd been sort of uh, hold, up, hold up, like waiting for a group of, I don't know, guys, obviously, criminals. I mean, it was a group of them rather than just sort of one, I think. And they were staking out the house. And they had like a call sign that they were meant to go in on. And she went in before everybody, and I think, you know, she had like 20 guns sort of pointed at her and her holding <laughs> one gun. Domino was in the living room with the people down and with the hatter. She had guys on the floor. Because we didn't know who's who, you know what I mean? We're just going after one guy. But you got to put everybody down so you could, you know, everybody be safe. You know, because you mess with homeboys, you don't want that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So everybody's got to watch their back and moving and they're looking. And all of a sudden, we heard a shot. Then we heard a couple shots and somebody got shot. None of us got shot, just one of them. And she said that was a bit of a bad time. <laughs> there was no her looking behind her back or something like that because she didn't have that, that fear. I never seen a woman like that. I didn't have no fear. Inside, she was always reaching for that, that extra yard, that extra rush, that extra buzz, that extra mile in terms of the adrenaline rush. And she got it through drugs and she mainly got it through um, and he got it through bounty hunting. Then she got into guns. She like, started liking guns. And that's when I introduced her to Betsy. Betsy is a shotgun. <laughs> Double barrel sawed off shotgun. She was able to kind of exist in that gray zone that bounty hunters live in where, you know, she's walking around with a shotgun and people are letting her do it. When she got a hold of guns, <laughs> that was it, you know? She liked them. She liked guns a lot. She like any weapon, actually. <laughs> you know what I mean? She, any, any weapon, you know. Fell in love with Betsy. That's why I ended up giving it to her. I told her, when I come back, I want it back. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I hope the police put less stress. It puts less stress on the taxpayers, because the taxpayers don't pay. Yes. And it helps out the police force as well. Quite a lot. That's quite a high percentage, and it's at no expense to the taxpayer. So. I always thought it was pretty good. We started doing things on our own, but we did a lot together, and it was good. It was good for a while. It was real good. At that time period, it was okay to do some of the things they did. And let's just say they, they had a very colorful reputation. They basically were uh, on the edge. I never really, I wasn't really quite sure how serious it was. And I still don't know to this day. I kept trying to coach and advisor and think there's, there's bounty hunting gigs. I don't know, it's, there's, uh, it's not, I don't know there's too much of a, a future in it because you're going to kick down one too many doors. And, and she said, no, listen, I love it more than I love anything else I've ever done. He said, it's, it's such an exciting world and such a wild world. Yeah, so I kept trying to guide her and saying, no, nah, you shouldn't be doing this, shouldn't be doing that. But she, she, was, a, she was willful and she was a, a mind of her own. When we parted, just go take care of our personal things, and then we'll meet up again. But it never, it never came.